Adding drag and drop functionality is a great way to make your apps feel more natural and user friendly. Of course, there are tons of drag and drop libraries out there, but honestly, I think it's super valuable to understand how all of them work under the hood. And who knows, maybe your use case is better suited to writing your own custom code. In this tutorial, we'll be using the built in HTML drag and drop API to set up a simple drag and drop system. Ready? Let's go. For this tutorial, we're going to be creating our Vue 3 project using Vue. If you want to learn more about Vite, be sure to check out the link in the description for our in-depth guide. To summarize, first we have to create our app, then we run npm install to get our dependencies, and then finally start up our app. We can head over to app.view and delete the default template and script. We'll be writing our own, so it's just easier to start from scratch. And for the script, be sure to remove the setup attribute. Okay, let's set up our array of data. We're going to keep it simple for this tutorial. First, we want to import ref so we can create reactive data. Then, we'll make our setup method and type const items equals ref. And inside, we'll create an array of objects. For each object, we need three properties. First, a unique ID so we can identify each item. Second, a title that we'll render in our template. And then third, the list it belongs to. As you can see, all of our elements are stored in this one array, regardless of what list it belongs to. We're going to separate the items by creating a getList method that returns the items for a given list. So let's create const getList and set it equal to a function that takes the list as an argument. Inside, all we want to do is filter our list using the ArraysFilter method, and we only want to return items if their list matches our argument. Don't forget, because this is the composition API, we need our setup method to return getList so that we can access it in our template. Now that we have our list data set up, Let's work on rendering them to the screen. Inside our template, let's create a div called drop zone, and this will be the container for each list. Next, we want to create a v4 loop and loop over everything inside list1 using get list and then passing in the one. We'll set the key to the item ID and we'll give this element a class name of drag l so that we can style and access it later. Inside each drag l, let's just print out the item title. If we look at our app, we'll see that the elements of the first list are rendering to the screen. So let's copy and paste this code and change getList1 to getList2. Awesome. Next, let's add some simple styles to our app. So inside the styles section, let's change the width of our drop zone, center it, and then change the background color and padding. The only essential style is setting our min height so that our drop zone will have some height even when there are no elements in its list. This is super important because if our drop zones have a height of zero when they're empty, then we won't be able to hover over them and drop new elements in. Next, let's modify our drag L class and add some colors, margin, and padding. And then finally, to make sure that everything is symmetrical, let's remove the margin bottom from the final drag L element of each list. Personally, I think it looks much better, and now we're finally ready to add some drag and drop functionality. The HTML drag and drop API is the browser's built-in way to enable drag and drop functionality in your app. It contains several events and properties, but we can approach it with a mindset that there are two main types of elements, draggable elements, or ones that can be dragged, and droppable elements, or elements that accept the dragged elements. To make our items draggable, all we have to do is set the draggable attribute to true. Now we can click and drag them around, but that's it. Before we start adding more code, Let's take a high level look at how our drag and drop is going to work. For the functionality we're looking for, we're going to use two events from the drag and drop API, drag start and drop. Both of these methods add a data transfer object to our events. And this data transfer object allows us to set data when we start dragging an element and access that same exact data when we drop our element in a drop zone. So when we start dragging an element, we want to store a way to access the item that we're dragging. Then, whenever we drop over a drop zone, we want to get that item and change its list to wherever we dropped it. Inside our setup method, let's start by creating our start drag method, and it takes two parameters, event and an item. For now, let's set up a console log statement where we print out the item being dragged. Then, we have to adjust two settings for the drag and drop API to work how we want. First, we have to set event.datatransfer.drop effect to move and this controls the visual feedback that a user gets during a drag and drop operation. Second, you have to set event.datatransfer.effectAllowed to move. And this tells the drag and drop API that we want to move the original item instead of creating a copy. With that out of the way, the final line we need is event.datatransfer.setData. 
and this is a method. Inside, we want to pass the name item ID and then store the items ID. To call this method, we need to go to our drag L and listen for the drag start event by saying add drag start equals start drag, and then we want to pass the event and the item. Okay, let's take a look at our console. When we click and start dragging an item, we can see the proper element being logged. Now, let's give a place for our items to be dropped. Back inside setup, we'll create another method called onDrop, and it will also take two parameters, one for the event and one for the list. The first thing we want to do is access the item ID that we stored in our data transfer object. And that's as easy as saying const item ID equals event.datatransfer.getData and then item ID. Then let's find the item associated with this ID, and we can use the arrays find method. So let's create a constant item equals items.value. Remember that we need value because items is a ref, and then find the item where the ID matches our item ID. Once we have the item, we can change its list to the list that we're passing in. Okay, we're almost there. Let's just head back to our template, and in each drop zone, we can listen to the drop event and call on drop. We'll pass it our event and then the list. One thing that's not really intuitive is that we have to call prevent default on two of the drag and drop hooks, drag enter and drag over. This is, by default, these two methods don't allow elements to be used as droppable elements. So for our drop event to work properly, we have to prevent their default action. We can do this using view's built-in prevent event modifier. And that should be it. If we run our app now, we should see that everything works as expected. We can drag and drop elements between our two different lists. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up here. Of course, this is just a quick introduction into implementing drag and drop in Vue 3. There are so many directions you could take these ideas, and I'd love to see what you come up with. Leave any questions you have in the comments down below, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more Vue content. Peace.